for the day of gathering, um, which is the day of Jumu'ah, is made. Fas'aw ila dhikrillahi, hasten and come to the remembrance of Allah. Wadharul bay'ah, and leave any form of business that keep, is keeping you busy. Put it aside and leave it. And come to the remembrance of Allah. Wadharul bay'ah, dhalikum khairul lakum min kuntum ta'alamun. Allah says that is better for you if only you knew. Um, Alhamdulillah, we thank him to have given us an opportunity to uh, to obey this command and fulfill his order. Um, I um, I will carry on from the from where we left off uh, in the last khutbah, as I've indicated uh, in the uh, two Fridays ago that I will embark on a series of uh, advices and um, uh, discussion points around the matters of uh, Nikah, seeing that our community um, we all uh, our majority still uh, very young, either young, young couples, people who recently got in married or people who are preparing to get married and so it is important to um, to understand these matters from the uh, Islamic uh, point of view because we're living in an age in which um, there is a lot of uh, uh, influences that can come from the different uh, uh, directions and uh, and some of those influences they are certainly not guidance from the Prophet Neither have they been revealed in the Holy Quran. Because of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, Allah charged him with uh, the teaching of the revelation to mankind, and uh, as the way of Allah wa Taala's wish and desire upon humankind on how they should conduct themselves in all matters and in all spheres. And as we've indicated, that the institution, institution of Nikah is a very critical institution uh, in Islam because it is, a, it's a, it's a, it is a foundation of a society or community. Uh, it is a basic unit of a community. A community is made from families which result from Nikah. So healthy Nikahs means healthy communities. 
healthy communities means um, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is worshipped uh, in accordance to his will. And that is the definition of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Islam. Uh, it's basically to establish a community in which the will of Allah reigns supreme. Unlike the, the times that we find ourselves in, where there's a lot of um, uh, conflicts uh, with regards to the, the, the will of Allah being uh, performed and fulfilled. I'm not going to go through what we went through last time, like I did, because I feel that the points that were discussed, they were discussed uh, in very clear terms, and then, um, and then if anyone w wants to revise them, they can always go back to the uh, to the recordings. I see that uh, uh, these sessions have uh, been recorded. We say Allah Tabaraka wa Taala reward abundant, abundantly. Uh, those that uh, engage and take part in the uh, dissemination of Islamic knowledge. Um, the hadith that we spoke about the last time was the hadith concerning um, the shepherd and the flock. Um, the Prophet said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum ra'iyatun wa kullukum mas'ulatun mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. So Allah the Prophet said, every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you will be uh, questioned with regards to uh, his or her flock. A man is a shepherd and a woman is a shepherd. A man has his flock and a woman has her flock. And then we we'll discuss the details about what the men's uh, flock is and what the women's uh, flock is. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, everyone will be questioned with regards to how they looked after the, the, the what you call the, the, the flock. Um, the next point I wanted to enter into is, um, is, is the point that uh, in, in, it borders on the on the on the faith of marriage or the faith of nikah itself. However, it is not um, the faith as we understand uh, faith in, in terms of the um, um, the uh, the understanding of the the prohibitions and the and the wild birds and the and the tarahat, many things that are disliked, um, um, in, and, and things that are mustahab and, and sunnah and all of that in, in that sense. But uh, the points that I want to discuss today, um, they, they, they come from the fiqh of Nikah itself, but we are not in that topic uh, per se. Uh, we will discuss the points of the fiqh of Nikah in a separate uh, session um, or separate uh, khutbah, inshallah, where we will just highlight the main themes of the faith of Nikah just to be able to help uh, the individuals to, to really understand what the, what the Nikah is, 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 all, is all about and what is its nature. The Father has imposed um, upon the marriage uh, partners and then um, the, uh, a, a, the, 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 the what you call the serving of Allah Tabaraka wa Taala through uh, creation. So, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Is the, the relationship that uh, the husband and the wife have? Uh, they have that relationship, and uh, because of Allah, and also they relate to each other in a manner in which Allah has prescribed in the Quran and the Prophet وسلم, has ordered us to relate with each other. And, and that ultimately in one sense, yes, it is the fiqh of, of, of marriage or the fiqh of nikah itself. But in another sense, it's also, um, remember when it comes to, to, to law in Islam, you have the, um, the, the, the letter of the law 
and then you have the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law and the letter of the law is basically to adhere to, 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 to law to the letter without considering what the spirit of the letter is and that sometimes can be harmful in some uh, circumstances. And then all this without considering the spirit of, 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 uh, of, of, of the law itself. In matters of nikah, this is, becomes also very important uh, because nikah can quickly devolve and break down when the letter of the law is emphasized and, and imposed without considering the spirit of the law. Uh, to explain just this, I will use an example. In Ramadan, you have uh, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala ordered us to fast during the day and to, uh, as, a, as a farad. And then by night, he ordered us to engage in salah. Now, the fifth of salah will, uh, will tell you um, we must do 20 rakats of salah every night. Some people will say that. And then, um, and as, as has been transmitted by the, the, the fuqaha of the four imams. And then another one will say, no, uh, I will do 10 rakat because I read in a hadith the Prophet used to do 10 rakat. Another one will say, no, I will do 13 rakat because another hadith the Prophet does 13 rakat. Another one will say, no, I will do uh, 40 rakat because I, there was one hadith, somebody was praying 40. Now you find that people argue with each other because they see you, you, you do the salah, and then you do the salah, and then people expect that if you don't do 20 rakat, it means you are not a a, a Muslim, a, a what you call a good Muslim, because why are you not doing 20 rakat? Because this person is focused on the letter of the law. But when you go to the the, the lives of the imams, like Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, they say he, he used to complete um, uh, what you call uh, uh, 60 khatams in Ramadan. He would, and the, the one khatam he will complete by day, the other khatam will complete by night. And by night he will pray in a, 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 what you call, a, 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 what you call at night, he will establish the salah. Imam Malik who has established that he would make 40 rakat of salah in Ramadan, right? Because the, 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 the spirit of the law says that engage in prayer, in, 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 in a ibadah, in a form of salah in Ramadan. It's not about, I'm going to do 20 rakat, if somebody is doing 10 rakat and therefore he, he, he is less holy than the, the one that is doing 20 rakat. It's not, it's not about that. In the matters of nikah, is also similar as well. There are certain rights that Allah has given to the husband and there are certain rights Allah has given to the, to, 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 to the wife. So, always to follow the spirit of the law is better than to follow the letter of the law. But there, there must be balance between the two. So in order to try to, uh, uh, to, to live uh, with each other harmoniously. So from the long series of the items that I, dis that I have been discussing in the last two uh, or three Juma khutbas, um, I will just discuss a few points regarding the, uh, the, the adab, the adab al-mu'ashara, the adab, the manners, uh, the one must have of living with one's uh, spouse, and so the first adab, and this uh, and, and this uh, series of adabs that I'm, I'm I'm talking about, or the manners right now, they mainly pertain to men, uh, and then and then later on, then we'll cover the, those that pertain to to women, depending on whether uh, time they permit, and then we'll continue from there off uh, in the next uh, khutbas. Actually, I want to take time to discuss this topic in details because people nowadays don't have time. Otherwise, these things are supposed to be, you're supposed to spend time uh, and make inquiries with the ulama, with the scholars, the muftis and everybody, uh, so that we can understand the matters of, of our team, so we know what we're doing, and this will help us to, to worship Allah sincerely and worship Allah, uh, what you call, correctly. So the first, uh, 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 adab of, of mu'ashara, the adab of living with one's spouse, uh, this is upon men, is the, uh, is the walima. The walima is the, is the beginning of the announcement of the nikah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Sayyiduna Abdurrahman bin Uf anhu with some yellowness in his clothing, and then uh, which was a, a, um, a curry that, was on his, uh, that he was eating the night before. The Prophet asked him, like, you know, 
like I see you were like having a party of, of some sort. He says, what is this yellowness I see in your clothes? He says, no, last night I made Nika and then um, and then so this is the remnants from from the uh, what you call the Nikah and the cooking that was happening. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, Aulim wala make uh, announce your nikah by doing the walima even if it's by slaughtering a sheep. So announce your nikah by doing the walima even if it's it's by slaughtering the sheep. So and that was understood as an order to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Ufra Abdurrahman ibn Ufra who is one of the ten companions that Allah, I mean the Prophet Sallallahu said he is Ashara Mubashara. They are promised paradise while they are, they are living on earth. So, and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's many other hadith, uh, it's like, uh, uh, that are discussed, but I'm not gonna go into them, but this one hadith is just sufficient to pass the message, that when you do the nikah, you must announce it to the community. Announce it to, so people know that, oh, okay, we have made nikah, let people rejoice and celebrate for the, what you call, for the union that you'll have, and then also, when people see you, they mustn't say, ah, well, why are we seeing you together now? Uh, uh, the, you know, this is not good because we don't know what is happening. Or maybe a child comes out and the people don't know uh, how is the child coming out because the, the what you call the nikah was never announced, right? So, and that's why it's important to, to, to make this announcement known so that it is, not only the community will rejoice with your newfound love, but also is to inform the community that when you see me with this person, uh, know that he is my wife or he's my husband. And then and everybody understands that. And then and this is part of the hikmah, uh, what you call from this. And um, this, the, this uh, what you call the second point I want to talk about is the, 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 the second manners is the husnul khulqi ma'ahuna. It is to have good character, uh, a good character. Now, this is um, these points, like I'm saying, is more addressed at men, but it does not mean that uh, women are excluded from it. And you will see from uh, some of the hadith that I want to discuss regarding this point. Um, but the the idea here is that because you know men, uh, they are um, um, uh, what you call. Um, the, uh, uh, what you call, they, they, they should try to, uh, to, to be good towards the, the women in such a manner that um, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I wish to be understood correctly, I don't misunderstand what, we, what we're saying here, but if, um, if something happens uh, in, a, in, in, in the nikah and then, and then the, the man must always, must most of the time overlook uh, uh, maybe things that maybe they see from the other spouse, which maybe they may not, uh, that maybe may create uh, problems in, the, in, in their relationship, but there must be a balance in this. And so men must not become like overreact and angrily start using their power against the, what you call the women uh, in that regard. Uh, so they must try to address matters with a good character, right? Uh, and so husnul khulqi, uh, the, uh, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has ordered the men in particular with regards to this aspect in the Holy Quran he says wa ashiruhunna bil ma'arufi live with them um, meaning the women bil uh, ma'arufi according to what is uh, uh, what you call with what you call with goodness right and and the the, the mufassirin say that uh, uh, this ayah basically is telling the men that they need to uh, uh, try to, uh, to, to have a good character towards the, the, the women uh, counterparts within the setting of the, of, the, of the nikah in particular. And then in another ayah, Allah, he says, Wa uh, they, they have taken covenants from you that are very heavy. And uh, so beware of those, uh, what you call of those covenants. Those covenant means that when the, when the, the, the spouses are uh, uh, what you call um, uh, tying themselves up in a, in a contract to say that they are now going to become a husband and a wife. That is a, a covenant that is very is very heavy. So don't take it uh, lightly. 
and, and in another place in the Holy Quran, Allah says, wa sahib, wa sahib al -jambi. Wa sahib al -jambi. Allah is, told, is telling us that we should extend goodness to the following categories of people. Among the categories of those people, Allah says, goodness towards one's parents, goodness to your neighbor, goodness. And then there's a specific category, wa sahib al -jambi, the one that is closer to you or closest to you. And the Mufassirin says that, wa hiya mar'a, this is a, a, a woman. So this address is addressed at the man that take care of the women, right? And Allah even specifically uh, 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 single them out in this particular ayah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is narrated that uh, he always used to advise people about three things the most. And these three things, they say the way he advised people about he spoke and he spoke until his tongue was tired about it, but he never stopped speaking about it. And if, uh, the, those three things, as salat, as salat, as salat. He always advised people to establish their salat and keep their salat. Don't neglect your salat. Then the second one is doesn't apply to us in our time. What your right hand possess. Many people now they have what they call the right hand possess. I don't know how they possess the right hand <laughs> when there was no jihad. <laughs> There's no uh, what you call uh, what you call um, um, the, yeah the prisoners of war and all of these things. But uh, but it, it, it happens. There there are somebody who lived in. Uh, I remember receiving a phone call in Ferenachim. You know the some girl was living with some men in in a house and, uh, and 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 so i received a call the parents uh, i mean the family were complaining about the situation and the man was like no it's uh, my right hand uh, possession you know. but uh, anyway so this is not something that happens in our in our time right but is there and then the prophet sallam says uh, do not overburden them uh, for do not overburden them, mala yatipuna, with over and above what they are unable to, 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 to carry. And then the Prophet Sallam said, now when he said this point, after mentioning these two things, the salah and what the right hand possess, he first says, Allah, Allah. Meaning, fear Allah, fear Allah, fin nisai, fear Allah, fear Allah concerning the women. Right? And the Prophet Sallam says, because Allah has, uh, has uh, entrusted them in your in what you call in your hands. So in other words, you have taken a covenant with the weight from Allah that you, they are going to become your wives and through that covenant you must make sure that you take good care of them and you, 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 you behave with goodness uh, what you call towards them. The Prophet said in a hadith, Man sabara ala su'i khuluqi imra'atihi a'atahu allahu min al-ajri mithla ma'ata ayyubah alayhi salatu wa salam ala bala'ihi the prophet sallam said whoever among you becomes patient with his wife um, Allah even if I mean out of the bad character that maybe his wife might have Allah wa ta'ala will grant him a reward more than what he has granted the patience that Ayyub salam had over his difficulties and calamities. And the hadith does not stop there. The Prophet salam carries on and he says, وَمَنْ صَبَرَتْ عَلَى سُوءِ خُلُقِ زَوْجِهَا أَعْتَاهَ اللَّهُ مِثْلَ ثَوَابَ آسِيَ إِمْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنِ That if a woman becomes patient towards her husband due to the bad character from the husband. Allah will grant him a, a reward that is more than the patience that Asya, the wife of your own head over your own. Think about this hadith, think about what the Rasulullah say with regards to how to conduct and live with each other. In other words, if you find something, don't take that thing and then start blowing it up and just try, try, try trying to make it uh, uh, big or, or on both sides. There is goodness in trying to overlook and being patient with one another. This is counted from among the, the good character. The, um, The, the next point I want to discuss yeah. is 
Al-i'idal uh, fil ghira. Al-i'idal meaning to have balance. Uh, we all love our spouses. Right? We all love our, our, our spouses. But jealousy must be, must be uh, looked into. A person must not be overly jealous over one's, over one's wife to a point where a, a person will try to dig into the woman's affairs. Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, he said uh, in a hadith, um, he prohibited that in the private matters of the women that they be followed up. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited that. Right? So we should try to. Uh, I know it's, uh, one has to be jealous about one's spouse, but at the same time, don't now start taking and say, hey, bring your phone, hey, let me see what messages you receive and who's sending you messages. Um, with the intention to see which men are you talking to or possibility of anything like that. No. Uh, that, that is part of a private affairs, right? This is part of a private affairs. Um, just like when you go to the bank, they give you a card uh, with a pin card. You don't say, uh, give me your, your pin number. It is, it is part of a private, uh, what you call it. If she owns some balance in a bank, she owns those balance in the bank. You man, you know, don't have a right to say, bring me your pin number, I'll go and, and use your, your, your this thing. It's part of a private affairs. Even a, even a cell phone, I'm, I'm saying a cell phone now because this is something that is very common, uh, what you call nowadays. It's like men will have, like to have this dominance, you know, it's like, uh, I, I, I want to see what is in your, uh, what you call this, in your, is in your contact. Try whatever Allah has left hidden. Try to keep it hidden and don't overthink it and, sus and be suspicious, overly suspicious that I, I think my wife is talking to the neighbor or I think he's talking to the other guy we met at the mall or whatever the case is. Because that is going to bring problems in the nikah unnecessarily. You'll find, you'll find that most of the time they, 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 that is not the case. Right? That is not the case. So we should try to uh, to guard our uh, what you call our uh, what you call our uh, our jealousy and the Prophet Sallam, even with regards to this, whenever he was traveling, he would never uh, meaning for days he would never come to the what you call to to to, uh, to to his house at night, out of fear that maybe he might find his wife in a condition that maybe his wife might not be happy with it. How many people now when they leave work and then they say? Uh, honey, I, I'm coming, I'm on my way, just uh, prepare. Um, people just show up. You know, maybe the woman is, the hair is not combed properly, you know, to look presentable in front of her husband. And this is part of the meaning to say, leave the private affairs of the women to the women. Don't try and dig into them. That will spoil the, what you call the relationship. The Prophet ﷺ says, don't come to your homes when you're traveling from afar, meaning over a few days uh, by night. Because maybe by night she's free, she's relaxed. But if it's by day, then the Prophet would normally enter the, the what you call his home uh, in the morning. She knows that maybe by then the woman probably showered and fixed herself up because maybe she needed to go out and all of those things. Um, the the next point I want to discuss is al iridalu fin nafakati. When it comes to nafaka, uh, to give to one spouse uh, spending money, I know this is a challenge. But it's part of the nikah itself that uh, men must give uh, spending money to the women, and the women can can do it according. They can spend it according to whatever their heart uh, desire or wish. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in in, in uh, relation to this, he says, "Khayrukum, uh, khayrukum li ahlihi." The best among you is the best, the one that is best to his wife, right? And the Prophet sallallahu said. Dinarun and Faktuhu fi Sabilillah. What dinarun and Faktuhu fi Rahabatin. What dinarun tasadaptu bihi ala miskinin. What dinarun and Faktuhu ala ahadika. Aada muha ajuran ala the and Faktuhu ala ahadika. Then a dinar that is spent in the way of Allah, meaning to contribute towards jihad. A dinar that is spent in freeing a slave. A, a dinar that is spent in giving a, a sadaqah to somebody who is in need. And a dinar that is spent to one's wife. Which one is more weightier? Uh, the Prophet said, The one that is more weightier is the one that you spend to one's wife. 
understand? So take note of that. <laughs> so don't uh, if if you don't want to if, if you don't spend on the on the on the wife. I know the women here they, they must come to me and report. <laughs> That's when he's saying that you already gave Sada in the masjid, that's the name in your mind. Hey, Rasulullah well s.a.w. say, the dinar that he spent was once wife is more heavier in reward than all these categories that you, excuses that you can come up with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we should try to, to, to look towards, uh, to spending to the, uh, what you call, to the, what, uh, to, to the women. Uh, in, in accordance to what Allah has given us. This is good, it's part of their right. It is part of their right that is, un, that is not explicitly stated, but also Rasulullah gave indication through this, like the, through the likes of this uh, hadith, right? There's one hadith that Prophet Sallam said, if a man goes out uh, to, to a marketplace and then he buys an item and then he carries it himself and then he comes to the house and gives it to his daughter, without the other children's son. Then the Prophet wasallam said, Allah will look at him. And man nadara ilayhi, man nadara Allahu ilayhi la yu'adhibu. Whomsoever Allah looks at him, Allah will never punish such a person. Mm-hmm. You understand? This is the, the Prophet wasallam is indicating how we should deal with the women, like, you know, the, with the, with the women, women folk. It's not only when you're traveling, uh, you say, no, I need a, a nice souvenir or anything. No, the Prophet Sallam talk about a local marketplace. It shows that, it shows to the women that you are thinking about, about them. The Prophet Sallam praised this, the, what you call this characteristic. So uh, this is all, I'll just stop here with regards to uh, what you call spending. Um, then the... Um, Uh, now this one is for those men that have, have got more than one uh, spouses. Uh, the Prophet said, uh, the person who does not do, do justice to one of the spouses, uh, he will come on Yom al Qiyamah with a, a limping on, on, on the one side of his, uh, of, of his body because he did not give justice to, uh, uh, to what you call, to one of the spouses that he was, what you call, married to. Now this is, um, again, this is, uh, justice means in terms of the place they live, the, the clothing they wear, the type of food they eat, all of the different needs that is upon the men, over the men, to the women, there must be justice uh, across. You can't say, no, you, I'll buy you KFC, but you, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Rojo Mama, you know, we have like a full, uh, uh, what you call, it. when you compare KFC, and I'm not saying KFC is better than Rojo Mama, but you understand what I'm saying, right? So, um, but we must try to, 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 to uh, what you call, it, to be just with regards to the distribution. Now, the um, the next one I want to highlight is the uh, Anushuzu. Anushuzu means that when one of the partners violated the, the, the violated the, the, the rights of the other, um, it's not to be quick in, um, in being judgmental. Try to find the solutions from within. And if the solution cannot be found, don't try and blame the next partner. Try and bring uh, people over who can come and mediate between the two so that people can then see who exactly was in the wrong and who wasn't in, 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 in the wrong. And that's why Allah wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, in your reader Islahuma, Islahini yuwafiq Allahu binahuma. You bring a party from the woman's side, a party from the men's side, and they look into the matter. And so the importance of this is that don't be quick and too judgmental uh, in, in dealing with issues that uh, come from the house. Because you might find that the violation that has occurred is due to maybe uh, the very same person against whom the violation is has, uh, what you call has been done. So we must do introspection a lot more times, a lot more times so that we can quickly arrive at resolving issues. And when you do find an issue, a genuine issue that is there, don't be too strict about it. Try to devise a plan to say how do we solve this problem together and, and then we can then uh, 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 what you call, don't say okay, now I'm going to send you to uh, uh, what you call, uh, I'm going to send you somewhere where you will be beaten up or whatever the case is. No, try to find a solution together and then and recognize the, the, the limits that uh, each one has and then try to solve the problem together. 
The next point I wanted to talk about, um, which will uh, almost conclude what I wanted to discuss today, is the adapt of uh, the intimate uh, relations, right? I'm not gonna go into details. And this one, I'm going to have a, a, a separate class, especially for the married ones, not the unmarried ones. <laughs> so, so we will discuss these details and then, they could, uh, and then, but among the things that I wanted to highlight here is that there's, uh, there's issues of contraception that also come into place, right? And that must be discussed because People normally practice contraception as well as part of the issues that um, are discussed within the Nikah and, and they don't know what Islam really says about uh, practicing contraception. Many people are guilty of this. You know, they, they, they like, ah, two children is enough for me. Uh, because they fear that I would, they won't be able to, to, to look after the children and then they, they practice contraception and they're limiting the Ummah, they're limiting the proliferation of of, of, of the Muslims through the institution of Nikah. If the Ummah does not multiply through Nikah, how else the Ummah can multiply? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, I was shown my Ummah, the number of my Ummah, compared to the Ummahs of other Prophets, and I found my Ummah to be more in number than the other Prophets. And then he, after he said that, then he said, you must marry one another to increase the number. But now many people don't do, they, they, they practice contraception because they feel that, ah, uh, I won't have money to take care. That, that's what the, the system that we find ourselves uh, is telling you, that you're not gonna have enough money to take your kids to for education, to have medical aid, uh, your bond payment, and all your other needs that you have. This system is telling you that no, only have two or three. And people, they neglect what was the wish and the desire of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to this institution of, uh, uh, of Nikah. So these fall under the, the adapt of the intimate, uh, what you call the uh, relations. The, 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 the last one that I just want to discuss is the adapt of Wilada. So when a child has been born to you in that marriage, uh, there are five things that one must look in, uh, that must uh, consider. Number one is that uh, you don't become happy, overly happy, for being given a boy over a girl. Because the, the, you don't know which one of the two, like the Prophet said in the Hadith, which one of the two the goodness will come from, right? The boy and the girl, they are equally important. So if Allah blesses you with a girl, be very happy. If Allah blesses you with a boy, be very happy, right? Uh, you, you have Isa alayhi salatu was salam, how he was born, right? Her mother made a covenant to Allah wa Taala that I'm carrying a child and this child will be in your service. But when the child was born, it was a woman, Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam. And then, but Allah did not say, oh well, because it's a woman, she must stay at home. She says, no, you fulfill, carry on, fulfill your vow. And then she gave the child to the Zakaria alayhi salam, I mean alayhi salam, and then she grew up in the masjid, right, in the mihrab. And that's, and look at what came out from her. And, and Isa alayhi salam became the next prophet of the Bani Israel at the time. Right, we all know the story. But in any case, it's very important to be happy at the child that is born, whether it's a male or it's a female. Don't live like the days of Jahiliya. The second point, when a child is born, you make the azan in the ear, right, uh, of, of, of the child. That is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and that is what uh, he ordered us to do. And the Prophet sallallahu had done this to Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein at the time of birth by Sayyidah Fatima anha. So we know it's from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the third uh, adab to have is to give the child a good name. Don't give child bad names. Give the children good names. And the Prophet Sallallahu said the name that Allah loved the most is Abdullahi and Abdul Rahman. Now this is giving you a hint on what is the meaning of a good name, right? Don't give the children the names that has connotations to other cultures and ideologies, especially if they are, in, uh, they, they, they are involved in Kufur and in Shirk. There is a phenomenon that is happening now in this country and maybe in other countries as well, where most people are beginning to, to take their names from their roots because they want to connect themselves with their roots. But when you look deep into this issue, you'll find that in majority of these cases, people have a desire to go back into the worship of their ancestors. And because, and that's why they need the, the what you call the names that it connects with them, with their ancestors. In that way, we're not saying that uh, you, uh, you one should not have 
a name that is um, uh, that come from their from their own roots. No, look at the meaning, and that as long as that meaning has uh, has association with Islam, with Allah, and and His Deen, then there's nothing wrong with that, what you call with that. Still carry carry those names, right? Then the 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 fourth uh, uh, category is to do the aqiqa. Uh, do aqiqa for the children. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did aqiqa for himself when he was 40 years old. Even though he, his grandfather, say, uh, Abdullah Abdul Muttalib, he made aqiqa and on the seventh day when he was born. But after the Prophet received nubuwa, one of the first things he did that year is that he slaughtered for himself and he did aqiqa for himself. And aqiqa is very important in Islam. And it's also a way to announce to the community that Allah has blessed me with a child and then, and then you ask the members of the community to, 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 to pray. And then the last is to do the tahnik of the child that is, uh, is born with a date or with something that is, uh, is sweet. Now I'm talking about this uh, as, as part of the, um, as part of the, um, the, the, the duties that is upon the men to do and fulfill in, in, as they start their, uh, what you call their marriage life. Uh, time is, uh, 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 has gone now. Um, Inshallah, next week I will discuss more on the. Um, uh, I will talk about the rights of the women uh, uh, to their husbands. May Allah Taala uh, guide us always, all the time, and keep us on the Sirat al Mustaqim, on the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.